There. There we go. All right. New setup. Live. Episode seven. Lucky seven. That's awesome. New Here. set. We got tables. Look at this. We don't need ladders, but we got chairs. It's so pro and real. I can't believe it. <laughs> We're gonna try to set it up too, so that we have uh, we have a system that we think might work, um, so we can get questions and answers, even with the camera, far away. Hopefully, uh, hopefully nothing interferes here. I hope there's not much of a delay either. Well, there'll be a bit of a delay, but we'll be able to get the uh, the questions in, which is fantastic. Unfortunately, we get to see ourselves. A little yeah, bit, but that's okay. Yeah, I don't mind looking at myself a little bit. Yeah, delay. Three people already. Oh, let's see how fast that delay is. Yeah, okay, whatever it'll catch up. I don't know. I'll see my arms out there. Yep. Yeah, so I just drank the beer now. That just happened like a few seconds ago. Oh, look, I can love my own show. <coughs> Sweet. Build up the lights. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, look at that love. You see that love on oh there? Oh, my God. It's fantastic. Killing it, the show already. Look at that, eh? Mm-hmm. That's amazing. So, yeah, total setup now. Kevin Smith, we're coming for you. You got nothing. No, oh, smoke show there. Um, yeah, nothing, pal. Actually. Actually, Kevin Smith was live just before us. Was he? Yeah, he was. Uh, mm -hmm. He was shooting a live segment. He was with his mom. Okay. Uh, so if you didn't know, his mom, he, he flew out to New Jersey to spend some time with his mom. Mm -hmm. And when he landed, he found out that uh, his mom was in the hospital. Okay. Did uh, way too much. I had some like blood pressure issue or something like that. Yep. And she went to the hospital, and then uh, so we had to go find her there. And he just did a live segment tonight. Mom's healthy, back out. And the first thing she wanted to do was go to Hot Topic at the mall. Interesting. So she went to Hot Topic and she bought a Netflix and Chill t-shirt. Right. Yeah. 70 years old. Netflix and Chill. <clears throat> nice. Does, uh, actually, have you ever been to Hot Topic? Hot no, Topic's no. a great one. I thought it was for women. <laughs> it's not for women. It definitely is it's not. No. Um, maybe I'm thinking borderlines. Maybe. Borderlines, maybe? Uh, Could be. Hot Topic. Hot what? Topic is... Um, Hot Topic is a, is a store that is pop culture. Okay. So you go in there, of course, right now there's all kinds of comic book themed stuff. Um, you'll find like uh, popular TV shows like Supernatural, Game of Thrones, anything that's kind of like geek orientated. Uh, you'll find all kinds of stuff there. T-shirts, pop vinyls, uh, everything you can think of. They'll, they'll have all of that stuff there. Uh, it's a pretty cool store. Right uh, we've been to do a few. I actually went into one. I think we went to one in Buffalo. I've uh, been to the one. There's one downtown Toronto as well. Yep. Uh, really good store. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly changing their inventory, which is really good. So if you're a huge geek and you like all that different pop culture stuff, it's a great store to go to. Hmm. Not to advertise in the store. I'm just saying, it's a good store. Yeah. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. Then maybe they'll send you free stuff now. Yeah, maybe. I, I hope so. Cliff says he's going to walk over. Right That'd be on. awesome. Sure, why not? we got lots of room on the table here. Actually, we do, yeah. we got, uh, I think the frame is big enough. We can, uh, yep. we can fit somebody else in. Huh? We can totally fit somebody yeah, else yeah, in here. some space. i got, I got elbow room here. D, uh, D had mentioned that he wanted to come, but he has to work tonight till 9. Right. Uh, we, we, as we know, D wants to come and plug his show, uh, which is happening not this weekend, but next weekend, September 4th on a Sunday. Sick rides for sick kids. Um, you know, we, we plugged it a few times, but we just kind of throw it in there every time for him. Um, since he can't be here to jaw, you're, you're off for a good 10, 15 minutes about it. How am I reading the comments now? Yeah, we, we put a device on the table and uh, we're actually watching our own feed so that we can get the questions as well. And that way we can push the camera back further and not have to worry about it. And I don't have to squint at the screen as well, which is fantastic. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, screw glasses. Plus, we can stop with the squinting comments. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And the J, go get your glasses comment. That's right. Yeah. I have everything I need here. Because instead, of, instead of just getting his glasses, he's just going to set this whole thing up so just that he doesn't have to wear them now. 
That's right. So, yeah. yeah. So it's been an eventful weekend. Yeah. It was. We, uh, I mean, we did our, we yeah. did our segment Saturday, but it was like right at the start of, uh, of, of all the stuff that was kicking off. MGD, no, no, we're drinking uh, Bud Light Lime tonight. Um, actually, we'll start before any of the sporting events. Tragically hip. Tragically hip through a CBC put on a live show this weekend for Tragically Hip. Uh, Gord's last show it was a really good show. Um, I actually didn't see it. You didn't? No, didn't you you had to go provide treats to your girlfriend, and I went. Yeah. And went to a hip party. Oh, weird. Um, it was all right though, but there but the bit of the experience of the hip party that we went to, there was uh, there was this guy there, and he's one of those guys that talks really loud. Right, but not only did he talk really loud, he wouldn't shut up. He just kept talking and talking and talking. Yep. yep. And none of his stories were interesting at all. Right. He'd talk about like how he was in like a, yeah. a hockey arena in like Boston in 1978 or something like that. It's like, you know, we're watching a hip concert, and it's cool that you got to go to those arenas. I really don't want to hear about this for four hours. Um. But anyways, yeah, we watched the show. It was like four encores they did, which is huge. Um, that is huge. I don't know if you saw the pictures or the, any of the videos afterwards. Uh, the arena they were in, Kingston, Ontario, the arena outside probably had just as much, if not more, people outside in front of the arena as there were inside the arena. It was absolutely surreal. Um, but while I was watching the hip concert, uh, UFC had started. Yep. Did you happen to catch uh, any of the UFC? I watched uh, the last two fights, I believe, which was uh, Donald Cerrone. Uh, well, Donald Cerrone versus Rick Story, and then, of course, the main event, Nate Diaz uh, versus Conor McGregor. Both <clears throat> were really good fights. Really good fights. Um, quickly, the uh, Donald Cerrone fight... The finish of that fight was the best part. Donald Cerrone put together a four-hit combination, which was the most beautiful combination I've ever seen in my life. It was like a jab, a hook, then an uppercut to the body, then a high kick to the head. All in like one fluid motion. It was amazing. And that's what he, he, he finished the guy off with. It was absolutely incredible. The guy, mm. is, the guy is really good, but... Um, we caught that combination. I've never seen a combination like that. So that was amazing. And um, main event: Conor McGregor, Nate Diaz. Uh, that was that, that was, was the really rematch, fight. wasn't it? That was a rematch. Yeah, uh, that was a good fight. Um, like I was saying, the big thing with the UFC now: the fighters train for mostly endurance now, mm -hmm. because um, the the camps are so. The camps are so good and the, they're, they're so skilled that uh, if you go outlast the person, a lot of the times you're going to win. And so now that's what Nate Diaz does. He trains really hard for endurance purposes. And uh, he almost got McGregor again. Almost got him. Uh, McGregor beat the hell out of him for two, three rounds. And then he started to fade. But uh, he held on. That first round, uh, like I said, that first round, that must have been a 10-8 round. Because he knocked Nate Diaz down like four times. It was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. He just beat the hell out of him. Somebody, uh, good fight, though. Man, it was a good fight. Cliff is asking um, on your thoughts on whether uh, Ronda Rousey's going to come back. Uh, she said she was going to. She said she's going to do a movie and then come back to the UFC. That's a good call. Yeah. There was a lot of speculation for a while that she might have gone to the WWE just to do kind of like a, a one pay-per-view uh, contract type thing. Um, with the whole Stephanie thing that happened at WrestleMania a couple of years ago, that, that was where, uh, where people thought that might happen. But yeah, I don't think that's, I think that was just a one-time thing. I don't think that's going to happen. Ronda definitely suited to be back there. No, she's, she's making enough money doing movies. Mm -hmm. And then of course, well, UFC, and then UFC is uh, what she loves to do, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what she's gonna do. I don't think she needs to go to the WWE. Speaking of WWE, versus Cyborg. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, it, Cyborg is, uh, Cyborg's arguably the best female fighter in the world. And honestly, I don't, I don't know if anybody wants to fight Cyborg. Rusty, maybe. That might be like the fight of the decade sort of deal that UFC can put together, but I don't know. I, nobody wants to fight Cyborg, really. And plus, she's having she has a hard time really making weight. And uh, I think Rousey's what, 145? 145 division? Cyborg is walking around at like 170, so she never makes weight, so it's, it's really hard for them to set up a fight with her. But uh, I'd love to see that, man. That'd be amazing. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Cyborg. Cyborg Rousey, that'd be a great fight. But, uh, yeah, who knows? We had. Uh not just Saturday, but Sunday had some events as well. We had um, the for all you wrestling fans that keep logging in, SummerSlam was on Sunday. I am not going to touch a whole lot on everything. I enjoyed the pay per view, um, but I do want to touch on Brock Lesnar. Uh, absolutely unreal. He had a match with Randy Orton. It was like 15 years in the making. They've both been in the business 15 years. Um, but never been against each other in a pay-per-view setting. Um, the, the short of what happened was is that Brock, towards the end of the match, he, he took his gloves off and he, he gave a proper MMA-style mount on the guy and just started hammering with fists and then started hammering with elbows um, and then split Randy Orton open with like a four-inch gash uh, that required ten staples to the head. Um, and, and the news and everything following that has been unreal about, you know, uh, even last night on Raw saying, you know, they said, you know, there's going to be repercussions for Brock Lesnar and what he did. There's been reports that uh, Randy Orton, uh, he, of course he needs some time off to heal, but he doesn't even know if he's going to come back to that business now because of that situation. Um, there was another wrestler, uh, Jericho, who got into it with Brock in the back as soon as he got back there for doing that. Um, and people had to split them up. All kinds of circulation going on. It was absolutely unreal. You can catch the videos on YouTube. Uh, it was, we were showing Scott there the other night. Uh, you just you search the SummerSlam 2016 Brock Lesnar. It'll, uh, it'll show him splitting uh, Randy Orton up. And it was, it was quite unreal. It was the first time ever they, uh, they, they, they ended the match and they called it for Brock Lesnar TKO win, which is pretty wild. Yeah, those... There's no doubt that those elbows were like they had malicious intent behind them. Like he he reached down and pulled Orton's head up. Yep. And then elbowed him. And I mean, I, you can. There's no and there's no denying the uh, pictures of the big cut on his head. I mean, yeah, it was it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't know why he did it, but uh, you know, well, I don't know. I don't know why he do it. I don't know. Well, apparently, the way it goes is that um, Brock Lesnar pulled a move and then pinned Randy Orton, and he was supposed to pin for the three fall, as the uh, the choreographed script had stated. Mm -hmm. But uh, Randy Orton ended up kicking out. So at that point, it's probably going off chore uh, choreograph, yeah, which means Randy Orton doesn't want to go, and they're probably just going to go ad lib and. Uh, Probably wanted to win the match, and Brock did not like that he went off script and just stood up, took his gloves off, and just pounded him. Yeah. Pounded him so hard. Um, it's a tough call because Brock Lesnar is. Uh, I don't know that there's a guy on the professional wrestling side that could take that guy. Brock Lesnar? Yeah, there's. There, I mean, in MMA world, there's probably guys that could take him, yeah. but I don't see anybody coming over from MMA just to stop. Brock Lesnar from ripping through a pro wrestling roster. Yeah. Roster. It's <laughs> it's a very sticky situation. And Vince makes his money off of him, right? He, you put Brock on a pay per view and you sell tickets. I mean, they'll sell tickets no matter what, but people want to see Brock. They they buy his shirt, they buy all that stuff into him. So yeah, they're going to keep him around even on a part time basis. Yeah, Brock. Uh, yeah, Brock is a really tough guy. He, he's a He's a decent fighter, um, but he relies a lot on his strength and size when he's in the UFC. 
Uh, he's even admitted when he's not when he's not fighting, or actually probably when he is fighting, but before he cuts weight, he's 290 pounds. And um, he has to cut down to 265 to fight in the UFC. And so everybody knows when you cut, you actually go back up during fight time. So there's no doubt in my mind he's still around 280, 290 when he's fighting somebody. And uh, I mean, the size he is, I mean, his, his body fat percentage wise, he's, he's got to be around 5%. He's, that guy is huge. And uh, he relies on that size. He, and uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to move the guy around. Mm -hmm. And that's why they were, that's why people really don't go to and try to wrestle with him because if he gets on top, it's really hard to get out of it. Well, and he's hurting guys too. Yeah. On pay per views and stuff, he's hurting a lot of guys. Um, it's not the only guy he's hurt. He's hurt Undertaker. He's hurt uh, other people and stuff. Uh, I've seen somebody commenting too that Undertaker could take uh, Lesnar. You know what? They uh, for a show to show basis uh, on the choreograph, they would make Undertaker look like they could take they could take uh, Brock. But when it, I think when it came down to it, Undertaker is way past his prime. I, I mean, he uh, if Brock just opened up on him like he did on Randy Orton, I think uh, that would be really bad news for Undertaker. He, uh, I mean, I know he's a tough guy behind the scenes, but if Brock really opened up on him, that would be really bad. Well, it's yeah, it's the difference between a tough street fighter and, a, and an actual trained fighter. Yeah, I mean, Brock Lesnar has a training camp, and he's being trained by. Uh, Real coaches that know how to fight, and uh, that it shows. Mm -hmm. But um, they uh, they confronted each other uh, at one UFC. Undertaker was outside the the octagon doing an interview, mm. and Lesnar just lost a match to somebody. I think it was uh, Alistair Overeem, and he came out and they got face to face. I think I remember that. Yeah, and uh, Undertaker asked them if they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. And then Lesnar just walked away, yep. and uh, he wouldn't say what was it, what it was about. But I guess some bad blood. But uh, apparently they squashed it though. Did they? Yeah. Apparently um, behind the scenes they have managed to squish that and become actually a lot closer, which is uh, I'm sure that happens quite frequently in the business. There's a lot of weird things in the in those businesses that, that you don't expect, like friends that are people that are friends and. Yeah. You know, and, and romantic relationships you don't expect and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, but that's it's hard to it's hard to know what's scripted and what's not scripted though. Yeah, that's I mean, the problem with professional cause, wrestling. Because Vince just said that what Brock Lesnar did to Randy Orton actually was scripted. I, I had a hard time believing that. Man. I don't yeah. know about that. I don't know why you would agree to take like a full power elbow to the head. You know, and you're split open. And you're like, that's ah, okay. It's scripted. It's fine. I don't know about that. That's mm -hmm. Well, Mick Foley, that, Mick that, Foley agreed to, to take a backfall on a bunch of thumbtacks and a head drop into thumbtacks. That's pretty bad, too. Two by fours with barbed wire he used to do and stuff like that. That's pretty crazy stuff. Yeah, that is crazy. Or what about the guys that jump off those big cages and go way down? I don't care who you are. That, that must hurt a little bit. <laughs> yeah? Even if they have, like, a crash on the bottom, that's got to hurt a bit, so... I mean, I mean that that's I guess that's always the argument when uh, when people all oh, wrestling's fake. Yeah, it it's such a broad word, fake. Uh, I don't know if it's fake's the right word for it. Is it scripted? Yes. Is it choreographed? Yeah, they practice. Those guys practice those that stuff every day. Yeah. And uh, they talk about their matches before they happen and stuff. Yeah. But uh, at the end of the day, they put their bodies on the line. They get hurt. And uh, stuff goes off script all the time, and stuff like this happens. This is this was a brutal one. Yeah, there's good uh, there's a good website out there for this topic, WrestlingGoneWrong.com. Oh, I haven't seen this. Yes, WrestlingGoneWrong.com. Uh, it is a compilation. It's a it has. Videos of all wrestling bloopers where somebody actually gets injured. So it's not really a blooper, I guess. That's not very nice. Yeah, Brandon Brown said it right. It's staged, not fake. Not fake. Yeah, that's right. Staged. 
Uh, that's a good website, by the way. Bloopers would be a good one, man. That'd be. But I, I, I say bloopers, but it's like it, it's like saying a car accident's a blooper. You know yeah. what I mean? Like say a, like a racing car accident's a blooper, but it's wrestling gone wrong. It's when they they mess up a move and injure themselves. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's some famous one where a guy does like a back somersault and hits the top of his head and knocks himself out. I mean, that's a good one. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of laugh at that one. Though. That's a blooper. <laughs> That's kind of a boob. I don't think he hurt himself that bad. <laughs> At least I hope not. Anything else going on this weekend? <clears throat> I went down to the Yes House again. Oh, the last uh, wrestling in UFC, which ties it all together, mm-hmm. is CM Punk. Oh, 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 I'm waiting for that. So CM Punk got an. It was announced that he does have a fight in UFC, the next UFC. Barring injuries. Injuries. He'll fight in the next UFC against a guy named Mickey Gall. And Mickey Gall is only, his record's 2-0. And, oh. and uh, which is, makes, that makes sense because uh, Punk's record is 0-0. Mm-hmm. So he needs another, a guy with a, uh, that's just starting out. And they've given him that, which is good. Uh, if, if CM Punk was fighting a guy that was like, say, 8-0 or 7-0, then you're kind of worried that Punk's there to pad somebody's record. Yeah. And you don't want that to happen. So 2-0, that makes sense. Uh, Mickey Gall, uh, he won both by submission. So you can kind of see how that fight's probably going to go. He's probably going to try to wrestle CM Punk. And uh, I keep calling him CM Punk, but he wants to go by his real name nowadays. I can't remember his real name. I can't remember his real name either. I'm going to look it up, but, uh, yeah, um, I hope he does well, honestly. Yeah, for sure. I hope he does well. He's been training hard, very, very hard. He's been uh, doing uh, what they, and a behind-the-scenes thing, what they said there, he's doing uh, what they call heaters in the gym. Heaters are an MMA match, a full MMA match between two training partners. Um, Phil Brooks. Phil Brooks, that's his name, right, good call. Um, a heater's an MMA match that they set up in the gym between two training partners, but they're wearing uh, knee and elbow pads, shin pads, and um, those boxing help training helmets. Yeah. They use those, and um, but the fighting is real. And they'll have uh, the coach refereeing the fight, but it's a. Other than that, it's a real MMA fight. They're called heaters. Uh, there was reports that he was doing really good with the heaters, like winning most of them, and then another report just recently said he was losing most of them. Yeah. So that's no what I had heard that he had lost like fourteen out of fifteen years in the end. Yeah. So I, I don't know what the real story is, and um, there's mixed. Uh, reviews about how he's doing. Some guys say he's doing really good and he's a natural. Some people say he's not that good. Mm-hmm. So, you know what? Honestly, you, you're going to have to just tune in when he fights. I'm definitely going to watch, for sure. That's yeah. uh, I've been waiting for that since he left uh, the WWE, and that was something else as well that was unscripted. Uh, he, he, he refused to follow script in uh, WWE. They'd hand him scripts before he came out, and they, he would uh, rip them up and then go really? and just say whatever he wants. Oh, really? Eh? Um, and Vince kept telling him, too, and he and kept pulling him back and saying, you know, like, we're going to hold you back if you don't follow the script. And he's like, screw you. Uh, your writers are terrible. And uh, I can do a better job. That's pretty much the gist of what he said. And then uh, one day, because the crowd was so behind him, even as a heel, um, they gave him the mic one day and he said uh, just go out and say whatever you want and he went out and he sat cross-legged on the top of the ramp and he went on a spiel for like 15-20 minutes and it was fantastic um, and the night he left I'm pretty sure that wasn't on script either um, in fact I don't even think his manager Paul Heyman knew he was going to leave uh, he had this speech and he kind of handed Paul the mic or dropped the mic or whatever and he just got out of the ring and left the arena wow. and that was it and he never came back Ever again, hmm. and that's he said he'll never go back. That is always rumors. Always gonna come back. But yeah, yeah. 
He, uh, it'll be interesting with him because, I mean, I've watched his documentary. He's got a really good one about uh, how he's always overcome everything that people said he wouldn't do good at or he, that he couldn't do. So seeing him as a UFC fighter, that's, that's going to be pretty interesting to see what the outcome of that is. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, honestly, I, I hope he does well. He's really serious about it, which is good. He's, he, he's taking it really seriously. And, uh, I mean, that's what you want to see. He's, he's not doing it as some promo or a joke or whatever. So, I mean, that's good. And, um, yeah, hope he does well. Phil Brooks. I will remember now, Phil Brooks. Do we know when that UFC is? Uh, it's going to be probably next month. They have one a month now, just like uh, WWE. Well, actually, WWE decided they're going to do two a month. They're doing two a month, yeah. I don't know why. I mean, well, I thought one a month is enough. It's plenty. Yeah, well, uh, seeing as how they're, what, like, fucking $80 now for a, uh, for a pay-per-view or what? You didn't have to pay that now. Uh, the way WWE works now, you don't even have to buy a pay-per-view. You just got to buy the channel off of your cable company for 12 bucks, and you get the pay-per-views for free. For 12 bucks a month, you get the whole channel and the on-demand and the pay-per-view. Well, you might as well just order the channel, then. Yeah, that's, that's exactly it. You just order the channel. Yeah. They they took a big hit money wise doing that. Oh yeah. But uh, oh, yeah. they were they were hoping to do that to uh, they were losing viewers to a lot of like the independent stuff. So they were hoping to bring back some of those viewers by making it cheaper. Uh, and I think it uh, it didn't help them at first. They they lost a ton of money. I bet. So things must be getting better because they're bringing over lots and lots of talent from all over the place. Yeah, I bet they are. How are the Jays doing? Are you paying, following them at all? What do we got here? They are up six to two. Six to two. It's the Angels. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, Ari Dickey can get a get a win for once. Holy shit! That guy is. That guy hasn't. That guy hasn't had a home win in like months. But I, that guy can't buy a win. He'll pitch like lights out pitching, like twelve strikeouts in a game, like crazy. Yeah. And then he'll lose like two to nothing or one to nothing. And I like that guy can't catch a break. We chain in the link is not good for that team. Um, not for a team that has a good all around. Uh, they they that might be something that they might look at removing him in the off season is very possible. Well. Yeah, I wonder what comes in on the, the playoff roster. They have to eliminate one or two pitchers. So it might be Dickey. It might be probably going to be Dickey and Liriano that they're going to eliminate. Mm -hmm. And they'll go with the other four because they got the better records and better stats, that is. We're probably having some questions come up. Uh, I do apologize if we're not getting to them. We're getting a bit of a feedback uh, delay with uh, uh, service delay on the iPad, so the questions are coming in as fast as I can see them going by the screen. Um, but we will get to them if there's questions coming in um, and regarding any of the topics, or if there's a topic that somebody wants to bring up, uh, we'll be happy to to jump on that for sure. Um, other than that, I mean, there hasn't been much going on the last few days for me. Uh, I've been at work. They had. Uh, Family Fun Day at work. Nice. Family Fun Day is uh, is kind of like a day where they give back to people. So they make it free. All these people come and they bring their kids. And you got kids running around everywhere. All these activities, cotton candy, and different things that they can do. Pictures with superheroes like Batman and Superwoman and all that stuff are there. Superwoman. Yeah. Nice. And then... Uh, Wendell Clark was there. Right on, yeah. He was the only guy without a lineup. No way. Yeah, so the, all these... Oh, well, that's kids, right? All these yeah, kids have no Clark. idea who Wendell Clark is. So they got, like, um, the fire rescue mascots, like the dog, the Paw Patrol, or whatever it's called. Right. So there's, like, this giant lineup that takes, like, a half an hour to get to the front of the line. And then you look over, like two tents over, and there's Wendell Clark. He's got one guy getting an autograph. Yeah. Uh, unreal. They, that's, uh, 
we get where we finally reach that generation where those kids have no idea who Wendell Clark is. Who are Wendell? I'm sure what he a got. Shame. I'm sure he got paid well. What a shame. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but you want to feel the love, man. But he. <laughs> Hey, he's some celebrity. He, and you go there and, like nobody cares about you. He looks wow. great, though. He looks great. Yeah. I I haven't seen Wendell Clark in a long time, like a video of him or a TV <laughs> shot or anything. I haven't really seen anything like what he looks like or how he's been doing. He looks fantastic. Um, he had a really awesome truck too. He had a big GMC Black Denali pickup truck. Nice. Absolutely awesome. Lifted on rims and stuff. It's pretty cool. Did so he? Get, uh, did he? Did he have his mustache? He doesn't quite have the full handlebar mustache, like big like he used to, yeah. but uh, he does have still a mustache. All right. And just, uh, just a nice golf shirt he had on and stuff like that. Apparently, he owns a quarter horse at the racetrack now at Ajax Downs. All oh, right. Uh, so it's probably what helped bring him in to do autographs and stuff, and they auctioned off some jerseys and stuff that he'd signed. Yeah. Um, but I, I knew that before, that Wendell was big into horse horses and stuff like that so he uh he buys horses uh to race at the different tracks in Ontario I think Ty Domi does too as well but don't quote me on that um there's a few guys from the Leafs that have bought horses that that's good that's got to be a lucrative business buying and selling horses well I mean who I mean that's those race horses can be very expensive. Well, yeah I mean, and the payoff like hundreds of thousands maybe a mill or something I mean you look at probably about five years before a racehorse will start to pay back. Oh, really, eh? Yeah, so the, like the payback on a horse is about five years. So you've got to be in that business making money, and they have to be winning. Yeah. You've got to be winning those purses a lot. Um, but the kids, the kids there, unreal. You're thinking like 1,500 kids in a small area running around going nuts. Uh, they were they were up in the restaurant running through the server's legs and stuff like that. Like it was just it was, <laughs> yeah. just, it was chaos. Um, but you know that's that's the nature of the business, right? It uh, happens on Canada Day too. It was, uh, it was a good day though. It was a very good day. <clears throat> it's tiring. Uh, it was one of those days for me where uh, it was breeze and windy out. So I'm thinking, oh, this is great. I don't have to sit here and feel hot. But the sun's still out, so my arms still got burnt. But I didn't feel it happening and so I started coming home and your arms are like all irritated and itchy and stuff like that. And you realize that yeah, even though it was cool out, it's still got sunburn, so or sunscreen. <clears throat> uh, all right, kids. For all those kids sunscreen. that stayed up late to watch this show, wear your sunscreen. Yeah. And eat your Wheaties. Yeah, and, and don't and don't, don't forget don't, about Wendell Clark either. And when you're when you're rollerblading on the street don't wipe out in front of me when I'm driving. That's good advice. Because not only will you, you know, will you <clears throat> might get hit, you most definitely will get sworn at. Yeah, exactly. You saying, you talking about the kids running in between the server's legs and stuff like that, that instantly really reminded me of kids wiping out in front of me on the road when I'm driving. And I, I mean... That's a pet peeve, and it's dangerous, and it drives me nuts. Kids on rollerblades and, and uh, skateboards and stuff, all of a sudden, you know, you're, they're, they're going nicely down the road, and then all of a sudden, see that wobble? Yeah. And then they lose control, <laughs> and they lose control straight into the path of your car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm telling you, it's happened to me more than once, and... Uh, I'm lucky that I haven't killed any children yet. I I ran over a skateboard once because a kid fell. Good. Serves him right. He, uh, the kid was skateboarding on the road. He tried to do something fancy. With traffic all around him, he tries to do some fancy trick or yeah, something. Kick, flip, ollie. Or yeah, or something. Into a selfie. Does something. Something or other. I don't falls. Know. The skateboard rolls out into the road. Yep. Just ran it right over the center. I look over your mirror, it's cracked in the middle. Nice. Bro, and the guy's screaming. You just want to go back and tell the kid, maybe you should have been on a skate park. Yep. It serves you right. Uh, if you're going to skateboard, go to a skate park or bike. You know, do so safely. Don't be, don't be wobbling in front of traffic. There was kids once that were like, 
Remember they were like jutting out in front of you in the traffic when we were driving the one yeah. the one day? They just come out in the middle of the road knowing that there's cars there. Yeah. And then oh, they move man. over at the last second. And it's just like they're trying to be they got something to prove or something. That was brutal. Oh. That was absolutely brutal. No. The one kid was swerving back and forth in the middle of the lane. And the other kid was riding on the side of the road were not even holding the handlebars. Yeah. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, and I was like, you know what, this is my, this is my nightmare, this is where, in my life, that I'm going to kill some children, <laughs> and I'm like, preparing myself for it, and thankfully they noticed and got off the side of the road, but, I they thought for sure, I, oh, they got sworn at, alright, <laughs> I, I almost died, come on, man. stupidity, what are they really kids, what are they kids these days, I don't know nothing. What is, what is this Matt talking about here? He's talking about bubbles or something. I'm not sure. I don't know how much of a delay we have. Dom wants to be a guest really badly, apparently. All right. Every time he talks about it. My problem, Dom, is, is that if you come on here as a guest, you can't just call everybody gay the whole night. And every story can't be gay. No. No, we, we, we gotta, we're going to have to sit down and plan it out, I guess. Because we want to make sure this show is not gay. He's got all gay stories? I don't know, maybe he does. He, I think, I don't know what to think. He, everything, every time you tell him a story, that's gay. Oh, he just accuses you of telling gay stories. Yep. Really? All the time. Huh. All the time. Great guy, though. Yeah? Fantastic oh, guy. Yeah, Alright, sure. Fantastic guy. Um, I laugh, though, because it's funny. Because it just, you expect it now? Yeah. It, you, that's gay. And you just yeah. laugh, because that's that's all it is. It's Dom. Okay. I would love to have Dom on the show. You come on out. Um, I'll have to let you know we're doing a, a live session. Come out and jump on. Um, he's probably going to want to talk wrestling. More wrestling. More wrestling. We got to get it. away from it. We should have called it the Ultimate Gravity Wrestling Show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we. Uh, but hey, Saturday, there won't be any wrestling talk. Why is that? Because we're going to be a Juice Jam. Oh, yeah, Juice Jam. Special vape episode. Right. Juice Jam. Juice Jam. Blah, 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 blah. I'm starting to sound like my girlfriend here. Can't even talk. Ooh. Burn. Ooh. Snaps. Do you see the laser it's beams coming off? Oh, yeah. The laser, burn, laser beams are coming off screen into my head. It's uh, not a burn if it's the truth. So, Juice Jam, Saturday. <laughs> From 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. You can go downtown. You look it up on Facebook. I've shared it already on the page so you can find it. A whole bunch of juice vendors. Uh, it's great. You can go down. I Nothing to get in. It's free. You can try all these different flavors. Even if you've never vaped before, go down and try it out. Uh, there's, It's pretty cool. And this year they're going to have food trucks there, apparently. That's what I was reading. They're going to... They're gonna have so many more vendors probably than last year. We went last year; it was a really good show. And if you are, if you do vape, uh, they will have uh, like juice specials on. So instead of paying like twenty or twenty-five bucks for a bottle, they they may a juice vendor may put it on for like fifteen bucks or ten bucks, so you can get a good deal there. Um, we're also going um, to Cloudfest on Sunday. Cloudfest is uh, anything to do with smoke related. So you, hookahs, vapes, anything like that. That uh, uh, Your medicinal herbage uh, will be there as well. Anything to do with oh, the really? cloud. Uh, Cloudfest, it's a three day festival at the Metrotronic Convention Center. Uh, Friday to Sunday. I will be going on Sunday for sure. Um, and I've talked to, uh, we were down at Canada e Juice today and they said they were going to be there as well. So there, there will probably be lots of different vape and hookah and different stuff going on there. And that's a big venue, so I'm sure there'll be lots of giveaways and freebies, which will be pretty sweet. You can smoke your concentrate yes, as well. Mm -hmm. Anything cloud related. Can't is. say weed. I mean, oh shit, I said it. <sighs> you, I meant concentrate. Now the cops are going to rush this garage. Man. Uh, they have to say concentrate. In the uh, 
in the weed stores. And they said, At least the one I went to. They said they had. They said you have to call it concentrate. A lot of places just call even it though there's food. even though there's weed flags everywhere. They don't have anything to do with weed. Yeah. Not not marijuana. Not that. Can't even mention that. The Canadian weed flag up there. They uh, forget about that. Well, like when they all call it herb. Herb. Okay. When you smoke your herb, <laughs> and they make a code. But then it's like, for the guy who's an idiot, he's like, well, what herbs do you smoke? Uh, a mix of parsley and I mean, oregano. Like you asking it earlier. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a nice mix of parsley and oregano. Yeah, I love to smoke oregano. Yeah, it's my favorite. Yeah. Well, it smells good. Why not? What's wrong with that? Mm. Might make me want spaghetti too. Probably, yeah. yeah. Parsley and oregano. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna smoke this parsley oregano joint and go eat some spaghetti. Perfect that's, combo. That sounds not bad at all. Well, when you smoke the other herbs, you usually just eat like junk food potato chips. So, you know what? It, I, I think parsley and oregano would be better for you to smoke. You'd eat healthier. Probably. Yep. Probably. It would that, feel, that's what I heard because, I mean, I don't do that. So. It would smell much better than <laughs> marijuana. That's yeah, sure. it wouldn't smell like a rotten skunk. Right. I, yeah. <laughs> Which is a terrible smell. I, I absolutely hate the smell of marijuana. I can't imagine at Cloudfest that they would allow anybody to smoke marijuana at the Metrotronic Convention Center. Although, knowing people, there will be people that will probably try to get away with it. Because mm. uh, there will be vaping and stuff inside. So it will be pretty pretty cloudy in there. You know, speaking of food, because you got you went off on a little bit of a tangent there. So yeah. I'm to bring it back. All right. Food. I was up in Peterborough visiting friends. Went to a went to a restaurant called the Whistle Stop. Whistle Stop. Oh, here it is. Oh, 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 Whistle uh, Stop. Yes. Tell people about the Whistle Stop. Whistle Stop is all about poutines, all different kinds of poutines, and uh, what is like a hundred of them or something. Like hundred, like a hundred different poutines on the menu. Oh man, poutines of every kind, and. Uh, <laughs> I ended up getting the crispy chicken, broccoli, and nacho cheese poutine. Nacho cheese. That was what my poutine had on it. Uh, in addition to the gravy and cheese curds. Mm -hmm. the crispy chicken, broccoli, nacho cheese on top. Dynamite. Sounds odd, bro. Absolutely dynamite. Really? Oh my god, it's so good. I haven't tried that one. That's up in Peterborough. That's, uh, that's pretty much right in the downtown core. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, it was. It's. Uh, what it was, you know, a substantial amount. I couldn't finish it all, and uh, it's going to cost you. I think it's between seven, and I think the top end, the top end poutine is probably twelve. Most of them are right in the center, like nine bucks. That's what I paid, mm -hmm. and uh, you. I mean, that's substantial. I couldn't finish it. Uh, I took the rest home. It's. it's, it's there's a lot. I mean, so I mean, that's what happens when you get poutine usually. Usually you can't finish it, you know. Yeah, well, I used to have a favorite poutine place downtown Oshawa. It was Montreal Smoke Hot Dog and Poutine. A friend of mine that owned the place. Right. It was really good, but uh, she sold her business. And uh, they, they sold it to somebody else. So now we're forced with going to Lakeview Burger and, uh, and Smoke's Poutine Room and we're really good poutine right. Right around Oshawa. Uh, have you been to Lakeview Burger yet? I have not. Lakeview Burger is awesome. Uh, Graham owns the place. He's a really good guy. He uh, he gets very creative with his menu. Okay. Uh, he will make a, a donair poutine, which is awesome because it's a poutine with the donair meat and the donair sauce on it. Nice. It's really good. Uh, but his famous mm -hmm. his famous menu item is the deep fried bacon wrapped poutine. Okay. So he takes a bake he takes a poutine. And he puts it in like a like a tortilla shell, yeah, like a like a pita wrap shell. Okay, yeah. And then he wraps it up, and then wraps strips of bacon around it, and then throws it in the deep fryer. Wow. It sounds like Heart Attack Central. It probably is Heart Attack Central. Yep. But it tastes amazing. I bet it tastes. Oh, it's yeah, so good. I bet it tastes amazing. Other item, absolutely ridiculous. 
It's a double cheeseburger. So it's two patties, cheeseburger with bacon, but the buns are grilled cheese sandwiches. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Oh man. That's really good. He does a peanut butter one too with crunchy peanut butter right. on the burger. It's really messy, but it's really good. That really is good. awesome. The buns are grilled cheese sandwiches. Buns are grilled cheese sandwiches. That's a massive burger. Oh my god. That reminds me of uh, of um, uh, in England a long time ago when I went back that when I was when I was there. I don't know if they still do it or not, but uh, in England they deep fry everything. And maybe it's just like one or two restaurants that do it. I don't know if everybody does it, but I remember a place got famous for deep frying everything you can imagine. Like they would make a hamburger with all the toppings and condiments and everything and then batter the whole thing and deep fry it. Or they would take a Mars bar and deep fry that. It's kind of like what they do with the uh, the X. Yeah. These days. Now everything's getting deep fried. Did, did you Coke move? and butter sticks. And I don't even understand deep fried butter. Yeah. Like, it's a stick of butter. They batter it and then deep fry it. Uh, what else do they deep fry these days? Everything. Oh man, there's Everything. so much. Deep frying Coke. I don't know how you deep fry Coke. Actually, it's, uh, at some of the sushi places, wow. they have deep fried milk. Deep fried milk? That's really good. Like, I like <laughs> it's milk. really good. I like deep fried milk. That's good stuff. <laughs> I like that. They have, uh, they have deep fried... I don't know if... Um, I don't know if there's any place around here specifically that has deep fried uh, rolls. But I've been to... Uh, I've been to a place that had a, a deep fried sushi roll. They make it all that batter and deep fry it. Those are the best. Mm -hmm. Those are the best rolls, man. We we also so tried good. we tried something else new tonight. We were we were looking for dinner tonight. We were out. we were gonna go to Mr. Sub. We decided that hey, we hadn't been up to um, Firehouse Sub yet. Okay. Up on uh, Ritson Road in front of Costco there. Yep, I've been there. You've been there? I've been there. Not yeah. bad. Yeah. No, it was it was fantastic. Uh, I got the uh, the barbecue brisket sub. Absolutely amazing. And the service there was fantastic because they asked us when we walked in if we'd ever been there before. We said no. And the lady actually took the time to, to explain how everything works, explain the menu, um, even offered up what the public's favorite is, what their, her favorite was, all this stuff, which was great. So we ordered, and they have one of those um, pop machines with like 800 different flavors in it. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, to, to show the, the customer service of even going a step above, they had a sign beside the pop machine that said, hey, try this. And it was uh, cherry lime, Minute Maid cherry lime. Yeah. They said put ice, cherry lime, Minute Maid, and then offered a bucket of actual cut limes. Right. And said put some fresh squeezed cut limes in your actual drink. Nice. That's great customer service. You don't see people do that anymore. It's just like, here, fill your pop-up. Yeah. No, these guys want the extra distance to give you like a really nice drink. It's good. I got a, uh, a friend of mine works there. Um, yeah, friend of, kind of like a friend of Emily's, but more of a friend of mine these days. Yep. Um, yeah, that's it. That's the whole story of that right there. I have not. I have no follow up for that. So I just wanted to say, Scott has a friend. There. I have a friend that works there. That was it. I have no. Good. I have no follow up because. Nobody listening right now is going to know who she is. Nope. Probably not care either. You know what? And I, uh, that's my story. I, I almost grabbed this. Uh, Sometimes my stories don't go anywhere. That's true. But they still sound like they're going to be really entertaining. I know. And then you drop off. So then the problem is... <laughs> that's not a problem. The excitement is is that when you listen to your stories, you got to listen because you don't know whether it's going to drop off into nothing. Right. Or it's really going to continue on to be a great story. Right. There might be a payoff. There might be a payoff. You could laugh, or you could find out some really interesting facts, or you could be let down really hard. And you keep everybody on that edge, So that and that's that's perfect. This time I let everybody down. You did. So... I I'm, let you down. I'm going to have to... Well, why is that? I, 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 let you, I let you down because I was going to get us something for the show tonight. Okay. And I should have grabbed them, but I didn't. Maybe I'll go up there and grab them for another episode. They had the plastic fireman hats from Firehouse. Okay. I'm not going to wear one of those. Uh, <laughs> I really don't want to either. But I could have. 
No. I think they want to see us wear the hats. No. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you one thing. Not to, not to, uh, not to, not to uh, lecture you or anything like that. But I have a, uh, I have some rules. Every man, every man should have their own rules when it comes to a lot of things. And one of my rules is that uh, I don't, I don't do self-deprecating humor. Okay. So, I mean, sometimes self-deprecating humor is making fun of yourself and saying you're ugly or something like that. That's one part, but the other part is, I tell, I tell Emily all the time that I'm not a trained monkey, which means I won't, I won't do something ridiculous just to get a laugh, just to get a laugh. So, that's one of my rules. I have many rules. We should That's write that down. Maybe one day we'll do an episode of your rules. My rules? Oh my god, I gotta, I gotta, should, write, I gotta should, write them down and think about You know it. what? Actually, we don't have to do all the rules. We should, maybe next episode, you can give us your top five rules. Top five rules? No, I, I gotta think Scott's about top now. five rules? That'd be fantastic. I gotta think about this now. For next next episode. We don't we don't want you to, to do it now because we're putting you on the spot. But that'd be, that'd be pretty interesting. F find your top five most interesting rules. That's a good one. No self-deprecation uh, for humor. That's great. Hmm. Yeah, I could do but that. But I'm sure you've got some good ones. I, I remember, like I remember when uh, we were good. kids, uh, growing up into the working world, the one rule, and I like this rule, so I adopted it myself. Uh, no matter what job I got, I wasn't getting fast food. Refused to work in the fast food uh, industry. Right, yeah. Yeah, just didn't want to work fast food. And not to knock anybody that works out in the fast food industry because you are doing us a service and doing the people a service. And I want to eat good food. And you guys are the ones that, that provide great food. I don't feel I can provide great food in a fast food industry. And I do not want to work in the fast food industry at all. Uh, I can cook at home, which is great. I enjoy that. But on, uh, on a whole like assembly line basis, I do not want to do that stuff. I don't know. Never. No, that's, that's a trap, man. And that's it's that's a, a that's a rule that you taught me. And I when I thought yeah, of it, really? yeah, well, I remember you saying that when we were kids. Wow. I don't ever want to work fast food, and yeah. uh, and, and that's a great impression, by the way, of me. Yeah, I don't ever work fast food. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> that's and, a great uh, impression. Love when you it. think about it, it's a great rule. Now I know what I sound like. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> we have any more questions coming in? This is like watching comic book men, only on many different topics. Comic book men, well, I guess if this was a poker table, maybe. Yeah, they got they got quite a better setup than us. Uh, they do, but then again, uh, that's a that's a televised show, and uh, yeah, we're we, we what's our budget here anyway? Well, I don't even know what the table cost. Fifty. Maybe fifty bucks. Did you buy just for the show? No. Okay, that doesn't this is a, count. This is <laughs> nothing. The only, you know what? Our show budget today was three dollars. <laughs> How so? I bought these. Uh, actually, Tracy bought them for us. These, uh, these big feet candy. Your corporate sponsor. Nice. Three dollars. That was that was for the show tonight, so that we could uh, eat in front of you guys. Three bucks. As well. So Somebody's no. really mad about it. I don't know who's mad about that. I'll tell you what. Three bucks. It's not a bad deal. My dad doesn't think I'm fun anymore. I don't know why. I don't see him do a live show. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, where's your live show? Yep. We got a pirate table. All kinds of shit going on. We're eating in front of you. Telling great stories. People are getting mad at us. I do like Comic Book Man, though. That's a good show. I love Comic Book Man. That's a great show. You know, it's a, you know what? It's a show you don't have to think about too much. Mm -hmm. You can just watch it and sit there and be entertained. Uh, it's very true. I've had a couple of friends beyond that show, actually. Really? Yeah, guys that I play ball hockey with in the uh, VASHL Ball Hockey League for Kevin Smith. VASHL. He was skew Hockey League. He was skew Hockey League. Yeah. That's way more than... No, no, no. You got some way more letters than, than the words. I didn't make it up, man. What is it saying again? VASHL? Yeah. Oh, VOSQ Street Hockey League, sir. There it is. Um, you can't slip one by me, pal. I try. I try to get one by you. 
Andrew McDonald, next game in two weeks. He is uh, he's yeah. on my team. Golgothians. Oh, what? We are the um, the Golgothians. Okay. The Golgothan was the giant shit demon from Dogma. So I have a jersey with a giant shit demon on it. Pretty cool. Golgotha is also the hill in which on which Jesus Christ was crucified. I see the correlation. Yeah. But again, interesting fact. You see I know. how that story turned into an interesting fact? I That's know. amazing. But uh, sometimes I can't help myself, it just comes out. Some guys from that ball hockey league just circle around. They have been on that show. Actually, uh, that one of the head guys, uh, Jim, I've seen him on an episode. He brought something in to sell them and stuff. It was pretty cool. Um, That's right on. The, uh, they're actually shooting right now. They're, they're filming the next season right now. Um, and uh, the ball hockey league is, is getting ready to play some more ball hockey. And they go down sometimes to Jersey, and they will play ball hockey, and Mingo will come out and play with them. Um, and I remember when I first got my job where I am now, um, the guys asked me to come down to Jersey to play ball hockey. And they said, oh, we're going to play ball hockey. They, they rented a, a place to play. And then they, uh, they were going to the stash afterwards to play poker with some of the guys from the show like that they work at the store. Nice. And uh, I really wanted to go, but I just couldn't bail on like three, four days when I just started my new job. It was like a couple weeks in. Yeah. There's no way I can bail on that. Um, yeah. But the thing that really upset me is they were taking pictures and stuff of what they were doing all weekend as they were going. And it looked like a lot of fun. But when they got to the sash to play poker, Kevin Smith walked in. Oh, my God. And then Kevin Smith pulled down the Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back Monopoly. Oh, yeah. Opened it up on the floor and sat down on the floor with a bunch of guys that I know and uh, played Monopoly with them. That's awesome. That's amazing. That, that really upset me. I was like, man, I really wish I was there now. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, That's a story, man. Apparently he will be at our ball hockey league next year. He's coming back out to play ball hockey. He hasn't done it in years. Right. He's coming back out, and uh, I might be looking to to bring back my team that uh, I tried to get off the ground two years ago, which was the Hemp Knights. Um, yeah. The the league organizers and stuff are really pushing for it this year. That that next year I try to get that team back if I can. But if not, I'll uh, I'll just join and play. Maybe uh, maybe you want to come down and play some ball hockey. Maybe. There you go. And, uh, see where are we here now? Well, we're almost at an hour. We have 57 minutes. What's going on, Alan? Okay, comic question. How do you feel about how they killed off Superman in the new 52? I'm not sure. I don't, I don't you know. You know what, Sean? Know how that, how I, uh, I stopped following about a year ago. Uh, new 52 really bugged me a lot. Uh, they changed so many things with the new 52 that uh, I couldn't. I just couldn't stand it anymore. Superman had like no parents, and he was he was rocking a t-shirt and jeans. Yep. And I didn't like that at all. Now I know that DC has scrapped the new 52 recently in the last couple months. They finally gotten off the new 52. I don't know what happened in the storyline, but uh, they go back to the, uh, the original style comic without the New 52 with the proper histories. Just some minor changes to say like costumes and stuff like that. Um, but they did bring it back and that's because uh, they, they, it just wasn't working. New 52 wasn't selling at all. Um, and Marvel's been having all kinds of weird stuff too. They, they turned Cap into uh, Hydra. Okay, yeah. And they said he wasn't brainwashed it's not an alternate reality. He wasn't coerced. All this stuff, they, they're trying to say that Captain America has always been an undercover Hydra agent from the beginning. Oh, I see. Which is absolutely terrible. Yeah. I, I don't know how you erase that many years of history and just say, you know what, he was Hydra the whole time. Are you kidding me? Well, they can pretty much do anything they want, really. They, they just say that this is what, how it is, and that's that. I mean, then they turn... Um, didn't they turn Green Lantern gay or something? I don't know. Was that an alternate reality or was that actual? It could very well have been an alternate reality. There was a character that uh, 
Maybe it was Marvel then. Didn't they turn Thor gay in the one uh, in the one? Uh, they turned. They gave Thor's hammer to a, uh, a woman. They get, that was recent. They gave yeah. it, last year. They gave it to a woman, who ended up being uh, Jane Foster or something like that. Okay. Uh, which I, I don't I don't know that they, they just. It's like they can't come up with the original story, so now they have to mess with the characters. Yeah. So much. Uh, well, that's the only way to do it. It's like in a sitcom where, you know, you're in, they're in season five and they need more jokes. They run out of jokes, so what do you do? They introduce a child. Yeah. You know, one of the characters has a kid. Uh-huh. I mean, that's the next step for uh, the Big Bang Theory. That's what, in my opinion. Big Bang Theory started off funny. Because those guys, part of the joke was they couldn't get women. Now they all got women. And uh, now it's not even funny anymore. That, that's, There's nothing for them to chase. That's nothing, yeah. Well, that's most of the jokes now gone. Yeah. And uh, I stopped watching finally when Raj got a girlfriend at one point. And um, which kind of sucked because a lot of the jokes... Before that was about Raj and uh, Wallowitz having like a pseudo gay relationship. Yep. And that that's it. Those jokes are over now. Yeah. They can't do them. They they've killed off a lot of jokes. Right yeah, now. and that's what I said. I'm like, well, what, what now? What are they gonna do? They all got they all got girlfriends. Uh, what Leonard's married? Yeah. I'm like, so I'm like, oh, that's the next step. They're gonna introduce a kid. They're, one's gonna have a child, and then that'll be the beginning of the end. Of one or two more seasons, that's it. That's all. I actually stopped watching that show uh, a couple of years ago. I, I'd seen it getting stale, and I, I just I was finished with it. Well, that's it. Like, I mean, most of the, the, the premise of the jokes is gone now. They, and, they can't do them anymore. And the same, like, with the comic books, with the, to circle back to that, with the way they were changing things so much, I found myself more buying independent comics. Oh, oh. Buying even Image. Like, they had, like, uh, Manifest Destiny, which was oh, great. That's great. Was with, um, oh, man, it was such good. It was, like, a, a supernatural spin on some history with Lewis and Clark, uh, yeah. which was great. Um, yeah, the Lew- the Lewis and Clark expedition in the U.S., they, the expedition, they send them on there, but the U.S. is filled with monsters. Monsters, yeah. Uh, of all kinds, like centaurs and... You know, like plant monsters and junk like that. That, yeah, that's a really good comic. That's a really good comic series. Yep. There's there's a lot of independents out there. Uh, a lot of good writers and stuff that don't get recognition because they're not with the big two. Uh, but there's so much good work out there. If I could recommend one comic. Sure. Uh, what am I reading? What's a good one? Uh, Black Science is good. I've read some Black Science. That's actually is really Black good. Black Science is a good one. Really, uh, they go like they go way off some of the ones. Uh-huh. It's all about going through different dimensions, and I mean, the fact that they're going to a different dimension, they can pretty much do anything they want in the comic, mm-hmm. and uh, it just goes like way, way out, <laughs> out of control. Like it's some of them are just really cool. Uh, that's a really cool one. Uh, one of my favorites, sorry, just came to my head, Lazarus. I've read some Lazarus as well. It's also a not good series. I'm telling you, Lazarus, that is one of the best comics I've read in a very long time. That is such a cool comic, and uh, the one, the, the one, the one thing I really like about it is that whoever's doing the artwork or the storyboarding, a lot of the the pictures and the cells tell the story without actually having yep. to describe what's happening just the way they had it drawn and then there's like a series of the drawing and how the people are moving mm-hmm. tells the story and uh, I mean that's a wicked that's a wicked series I love that one it's all about it's all about the future where families there's warring families and they control huge areas of land mm-hmm. and each family has a Lazarus, which is a family member that is modified in some way. So one they get modified with, uh, one guy's got cybernetic implants, the other Lazarus for another family takes like um, 
like medication and pills and injections and stuff. The other one's got like genetic modifications, and uh, man, that's incredible. Those, that that's a good series. We're gonna we're gonna wrap up here. We've just been we've, we've hit over an hour. Um, I'm gonna throw one more recommendation on the comic book scale here. Um, Lock and Key. Oh my God, that's by uh, by Joe Hill. That series it was a six volume series, so each volume had about four to six comics in it. Um, it was about a family that moved out of town to like some suburban country type home, but they moved into a mansion. And the kids start finding keys with mystical, magical properties, and of course there is an antagonist villain in the in the whole story as well. It is so wonderfully written and so amazing that uh, it is probably my all-time favorite comic book of all time. Uh, same, same. With me. It, it yeah. is absolutely phenomenal uh, to the point where I actually thought about collecting uh, just the keys to put on my hall, like in, on my wall, because there's a company that actually makes replicas of the keys from the book. Uh, I cannot boast enough about that. I have read that series twice. It's a, it's it is absolutely amazing. Yeah. And Fan, if, if you're fantastic. looking to get into something, get into Lock and Key. It's a series that's not going anymore. It's complete, so you can get the whole story from start to finish now. Yeah, I, I agree. Lock and Key, pro probably one of my favorite yeah. comic series of all time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and an absolutely fantastic series. Sure. Yeah, and it's complete, too, yeah. Um, uh, we're we're gonna sign off. Yeah, what? Now I'm just thinking about comics series. We can now. we oh can we can go we can go forever on comics. We haven't even begun to scratch the surface what? on this. Oh my god. We uh we're we're over. Okay, one hour more. six. We're gonna get caught off soon by Facebook. So, <laughs> okay, one more quickly. One more quickly. The comic series. Uh, uh, another one of my uh, probably my second best or second favorite is called Why the Letter Y the Last Man. Why the Last Man? It's about oh, a virus, a virus that sweeps Earth, kills off the males of every single species on Earth, mm -hmm. except for one man. He's the last man, and his pet monkey. The pet monkey's a male too. Well, it's amazing. So it's him and his pet monkey, and he's got to figure out what's happening. And uh, that comic series, that one's complete as well. It ran its course. And that one is absolutely fantastic too. I I'm gonna lock check and, it out. That's a close second for me. Lock and key, definitely lock and key. If you want to check out one, pick lock and key. That is absolutely fantastic. We, I, you know what? I think we're gonna do a comic episode where we're gonna touch on a whole bunch more. Uh, I'm gonna do some research and see what's been going on in the comic world again. And maybe we'll bring out some golden oldies for you guys to we can talk about. Um, but we're gonna sign off. We'll try to do another episode before Saturday before we head off to Juice Jam and yeah. do our vape episode. Um, I'm pretty free up in the evening, so I'm sure we can get one or two more out through the week. Yeah. And uh, if you guys have any topics out there, we're going to throw this up on the Ultimate Gravity page. Please, please, please spread the word, share the page, get pe invite people to the page. We're trying to build the audience on that page so that we can broadcast from there. Comment, um, comment on the video. Comments, keep after, Even after we post the video, I mean, put comments down on to it. We go through and we read everything after the episode's done. Uh, we to make sure if there's anything that we we missed that we might want to touch on the next episode. Uh, absolutely, comment away, and we will see you very shortly within the next day or two. Uh, only a disadvantage of having our camera way over there. I gotta get up. So we gotta yeah, see my sex body, and uh, I gotta come around. All right, bye. Kirk out. Later, guys.